we've covered a lot of macho heroes here on Death Battle, but these two are as manly and stoic as they come. It's all in those sweet-ass jackets. I mean, I, I guess they're pretty badass, too. Jotaro Kujo, the delinquent-turned-hero from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. And Kenshiro, the wandering fist of the North Star. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. As a teenager, Jotaro Kujo was a fairly infamous troublemaker. But you can just call him Jojo like his friends do. Get it? Jotaro Kujo? How bizarre. Well, being a high school hoodlum isn't usually a good idea. It worked out great for him, because he toughed up a lot. At the age of 17, Jotaro was arrested for brutally pummeling four known gang members, who were armed with knives and nunchucks of all things, with apparently his bare fists. But Jotaro had a bigger problem. He didn't know how he did it. He knew he was tough, but not that tough. So he came to the only conclusion that makes sense. He was possessed by an evil spirit! Just like my pet rat. Yeah, wait, is that why he's been scratching pentagrams all over his cage? You'll find out. But then Jotaro did something absolutely crazy. To prove his theory, he swiped a police officer's gun, pointed it straight at his head, and fired. And that's how he died. Just kidding! A third arm popped out of his body to stop the bullet, of course! This strange being attached to Jotaro wasn't an evil spirit at all. It's an entity physically generated by Jotaro himself, and inherited through his bloodline. Yeah, lots of the Jojo family has them, including his granddad, Joseph! These beings are called stands, literally because they stand by you. Ugh, I mean, I guess it's not wrong. It's so lame! Stands are powered by their user's life force, and turns out Jotaro's life force is supercharged because he's got one of the strongest stands of all, Star Platinum. Star Platinum has superhuman strength, speed, precision, and vision. He can even phase through bodies and affect a person's inner organs. Plus, while Star Platinum can take a solid hit, most stands can only be damaged by other stands or stand users. So, he's basically invincible unless he's fighting another stand? Exactly. In fact, unless you have a stand of your own, you wouldn't even be able to see Star Platinum. Oh great, so he's invincible and invisible. And when you combine all that with Jotaro's fighting skills and exceptional cleverness, they make a magnificent team. That's good, because Jotaro soon found out his family's old vampire nemesis was out to get him. <laughs> With Star Platinum at his side, Jotaro didn't just stand up to Dio, he copied Dio's greatest ability, the Time Stop. With this new power, Star Platinum can freeze time everywhere for five seconds. He can do it multiple times, though it does need a sort of recharge between uses. Kinda like an ability cooldown in a video game, or me in the bedroom, ladies. But still, he can friggin' stop time! In Jotaro's case, he may be human, but he's strong enough to smash through stone and leap several stories. On the other hand, Star Platinum is said to be faster than light. Sure, technically he can because he can stop time or whatever, but he can't really move that fast normally, right? Well, maybe. Star Platinum has matched his speed with another stand called Silver Chariot. Silver Chariot previously defeated a different stand called Hanged Man. Long story short, Hank Van moves between reflections at light speed, and Silver Chariot caught him in mid-movement. Granted, Silver Chariot had to use an elaborate plan to force Hank Van into moving in a predictable direction. If Silver Chariot was truly faster than light, he wouldn't have needed to resort to such a plan. But the fact he caught Hanged Man at all is proof enough that he's at least close to light speed. So that means Star Platinum is close to light speed too. And he's got the super strength to back up his super speed. He can lift a steamroller that's around 60 tons. He broke the top of this building off and threw it like a javelin. And then there's the time that he broke a giant monster lady's teeth that were harder than diamonds. The definition of hardness refers to an object's protection from scratches. But we could also compare this to pressure resistance or the possibility of fracture through a diamond's cleavage. <laughs> Not that kind of cleavage. <clears throat> the toughest diamonds break around 600 gigapascals. This means Star Platinum can clearly strike with a force equivalent to 3 million tons. Turns out diamonds aren't forever when Star Platinum's around. What can't this guy do? Sounds like nobody could beat him. 
Maybe not, but unlike Stan's, Jotaro isn't invincible or invisible. And whenever Jotaro is hurt, Star Platinum feels the same pain. In fact, when a stand user dies, so does their stand. And vice versa. Sure, but with a guy like Star Platinum having his back, I don't think Jotaro has a whole lot to worry about. These two are one kick-ass duo. And stylish. Your receipt. You can keep the freaking change. It's the last decade of the 20th century, and the world has been ruined. In this apocalyptic age, the strong survive and the weak kneel. Only one man challenges this new society, and fortunately, he has the literal power to do it. Kenshiro, Fist of the North Star! Like most important protagonists, Kenshiro began his journey to greatness as a young orphan. Lucky for him, he eventually met Old Man Ryukin, who was a pretty cool dude, ended up adopting Kenshiro along with a few other kids. He was also the 63rd Denshosha. Don't shoot what? It's on safety. A grandmaster of an ancient Chinese martial art called Hokuta Shinken. While anyone can learn the basics of this dangerous fighting style, there can only ever be one grandmaster for each generation. So that's what Kenshiro set out to be. And with patience, training, and plenty of muscle building, he was named the next successor of Hakuna Matashin. Too bad his adoptive brother got pissed he wasn't chosen and killed Ryukin over it. Talk about a sore loser. With Hokuto Shinken mastered, Kenshiro can focus his energy into his strikes, effectively killing an opponent with a single blow to their pressure points. There are 708 malleable pressure points in the human body, and striking any of them can cause all sorts of effects. Stunning, blinding, healing, restoring memories, making people walk backward. But mostly, they just make people explode. Anyway, things started looking pretty great for Kenny. He even got engaged. But then nuclear war broke out and turned the Earth into Mad Max land. Kinshiro's fiance got kidnapped, and this guy used his knife fingers to draw a nifty big dipper on Kenshiro's chest. Seriously, how is he not dead after that? Miraculously, Kenshiro survived and began his wayward journey, wandering the wasteland searching for revenge. And if we go by how many people he blew up, I'd say he got plenty of it. He really does leave a big mess behind. I can't even imagine what it must be like to clean up after one of his fights. Kenshiro had no problem killing hordes of baddies with moves like his bone-crushing fist, spilling wheel-exploding fist, and hundred crack fist. Huh. Seeing him kill all these people from the inside out reminds me a lot of my ex-wife. Um, how? Emotionally, Wiz. Most of the time, his body explosions don't even happen right away, giving him plenty of time to explain to his foes how they're about to die right before they explode. You think you can beat me with a finger? That finger struck the hidden vital point known as Gakuchu. There's no use fighting now. You're already dead. But Hakuna Matata isn't just for blowing up people. Sure, Kenshiro has developed a number of legendary techniques, such as the Tenryu Kokyuho, aka the art of dragons breathing. According to Kenshiro, this unlocks the full potential of his natural abilities, where a normal fighter would only use about 30%. He can utilize Toki, or his own natural key, to perform numerous techniques. Most of these involve punching, of course, but he can also create mirage images of himself, sense other fighting auras, and fire key-based projectiles to attack or defend from a distance. Oh, uh, and he can perform miracles, like making a mute girl speak! Ken! How the heck? But even that pales in comparison to Hokuto Shinken's ultimate technique, one which no previous Grandmaster ever unlocked, Muso Tensei. Only those who truly understand pain and loss can apply Muso Tensei. With it, Kenshiro draws upon his inner sadness to enter a state of nothingness. From here, he is impervious to attacks, essentially achieving intangibility. He also somehow connects to the souls of dead allies and rivals, and can even use their techniques. But it's not like he needs them, he's already crazy enough on his own. He smashed the bones of a giant with a single hand, broke a metal table just by standing up, and hit a tank so hard, it blew up. He's even strong enough to break a skyscraper in half. And then when it collapsed on top of him, he just walked through it. What a boss. Just the concrete in one floor of an average size skyscraper can weigh over 1,000 tons. You think that's tough? Kenshiro can stand in lava. Lava! You know how hot lava is? 
Up to 2,000. Yeah, really freaking hot, that's what. And remember that tank? Before he blew it up, it shot him square on. It did absolutely nothing to him. Seriously, this guy is manly as hell. You all right, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. It's time for a death battle! だれだ、おめえは。おい、ジジイ。やるって言うのなら相手になろう。場所を選ぶ。そこが貴様の死に場所だ。やっぱりお前は態度がでかいな。Kentro needed to do to win was just get one hit in, but this matchup was far closer than that makes it seem. Of course it was! Kentro spent the whole time fighting Star Platinum, who he couldn't even see. Lucky for him, once he figured that out, his ability to sense other fighting auras helped him keep track of SP. But no matter what he did, Kentro isn't a stand user, so he couldn't actually hurt Star Platinum. Then again, Star Platinum's own strength wasn't quite enough to hurt Kentro much either. One of Star Platinum's greatest strength feats involves breaking and throwing a small section of a building. In comparison, Kentro broke an entire building, let it fall on him, and acted like it wasn't even there. Also, while Jotaro may be skilled in deducing his enemy's weaknesses and strategies in mid-fight, Kenshiro's skills, durability, and straightforward approach meant there really wasn't anything for him to pick apart here. Kenshiro did have trouble with Jotaro's time-stopping and Star Platinum's speed. However, with his awesome durability plus additional intangibility when using Muso Tensei, Kenshiro survived the time-stops. And the time stops cooldowns between uses gave Kentro enough time to work around them. The time stop has been worked around by foes in Jotaro's past before, and as far as speed was concerned, Kenshiro may not have been faster than Star, but a mix of Mutsu Tensei and Mirage clones were more than enough to get by. And let's be real, Jotaro never stood a chance against Kenshiro by himself. In the end, both combatants had plenty of advantages, but Kenshiro's techniques and overwhelming power ended this fight. Jojo didn't stand a chance. The winner is Kenshiro. Hey guys, thanks for watching this death battle. If you want to see exclusive commentary, click that link right over there. And if you guys want to pick up the fight track for this episode, link in the description.